Hello everyone. Welcome to the second episode in our series about testing websites and web apps in real browsers using Nightwatch. In our first episode, we learned how to set up a testing environment with Nightwatch and successfully write our first end to end test. Here's a quick recap. We learned how to set up our environment. It's a simple command npm init Nightwatch. We also learned how to write our first test using browser.navigate2 to the home page and do a text equals of h1 to be the particular text. And then we learned how to execute the test using npx nightwatch test. If you missed the first episode, I'll add a link to it in the description. The web is made of complex elements and involves a lot of user interactions. Today, we'll learn the basics of nightwatch web testing using a few simple scenarios. I'll teach you these three crucial techniques that will help you test most scenarios in the web. It goes in this order. Finding elements, interacting with elements, and verifying properties of the elements. You can apply this idea in most of the use cases you will face when testing the web. Using the three techniques, we'll write tests for the following scenarios. First, we'll click on Get Started and check if we are going to the installation page. And next, we'll click on the search, type frame, wait for the results to load, press on the down arrow, press enter, and see if we go to the correct documentation page. We'll continue where we left off, after our setup and our first test. At the end of this video, you'll be able to write tests for the most common scenarios in testing websites and web apps. We'll learn each of these three techniques and we'll use them to write out tests at the end for the two scenarios that we mentioned. The first step is to find elements. Nightwatch allows us to find elements in a variety of ways. The most common approach is to use the CSS selector. You can do this using browser.element dot find area. Inside this you can give any CSS selector and we'll Nightwatch will find the element for us. Beyond this you can also use other ways and you can see all the ways here. In for the scope of the tutorial we'll be using find by text to find an DOM element by its text find by and find by placeholder text to find the input element with the appropriate placeholder. It's also possible to chain find elements so you can go deeper and deeper. Find and find other find elements inside. This way you can exactly find the element that you're looking for. Sometimes you might want to wait for the element to appear. Maybe the page is loading. Maybe the state of the element is changing. This can be done using wait until function. You can wait until the state of the element is changed. The major changes are selected, visible, enabled and the opposite of all of them. Now that we know how to find an element, let's go on to interacting it. The most common interactions in the web are clicking on elements and filling out forms. You can do this in Nightwatch using the interaction APIs listed here. As you can see, click, clear, drag and drop, upload, set property, upload file, click and hold, double click, and there are more. But for the scope of this video, we'll focus on click and send keys. Clicking is very straightforward. We find an element and just apply click. This clicks on the DOM element. We can also send keyboard inputs using send keys function. This function takes a string that we, we, we want to type on the input or a list of special keys. The special keys are found under browser.keys. In this case, let's, we want to go on and press the down arrow and we want to press enter. It's as simple as that. The final and most important aspect of testing is to verify what we are looking for matches what's on the web page. Before we start testing, we need to find the aspects of element to test. We can do this using get here, we'll get the text of the element. The testing can be done using assert. There are three kinds of assertions contains, equals, and matches. Contains check if the text we are looking for is present inside the element. Equal verifies the exact equality of the text. 
matches takes a regular expressions and verifies it against the element text. We can also verify the state of the element by applying assert directly under the element. This can be visible, present, enabled, or selected. This is the same as you uh, using wait until we learnt earlier and it can be used interchangeably. The document status can be verified by applying assert on top of the browser. The document URL and the title can be verified using contains matches and equals just like we learned before. To apply negation on top of the assertion, all we need to do is write a not after the assert. We can also do a soft assertion by using the word verify instead of the assert. So the test will continue after checking without stopping. With all the methods we've learned so far, let's write tests for the two scenarios we mentioned earlier. This is where we left off in our first episode, home.spec, where we check if the title is correct. Let's write our first scenario. We want to click on the get started button and check if it leads to the installation page. Let's write the description and then let's navigate to the home page. This works because we have set the navy launch URL to be Nightwatch home page. So we can use slash to lead to our home page. And then we find the element using the text get started and we click on it. For dynamic pages which doesn't reload the browser, it's best practice to wait for elements to be visible. Here we look for an input element with the placeholder text called filter by title and we wait for it to be visible to know when the page is fully loaded. Once the page is loaded, we check the h1 element to contain install nightwatch. We also verify the browser title and the browser URL to be the same as we expected. To showcase attribute assertions, I've also verified the autocomplete attribute of the input bar to be off. We find the input element using the placeholder text. We get the att attribute autocomplete and then we assert if it's off. At the end, we do browser.in. This is a good practice to end the browser after the test is complete. The second scenario is to click on search, search for frame, go to the docs page using down and enter and then check if we have landed at the right page. Let, we, let's start by navigating to the home page and then we'll find the search icon with the id doc search and we click on it. And then we wait for the doc model to open up by using wait until function and using visible on it. We find the input element using the placeholder text search docs and then we send the keys frame. We wait for the results to be loaded by checking the presence of the drop down container. This can be used interchangeably with wait until. And then we need to press down and enter. We do this using browser.keys.arrow down and browser.keys.enter. Here I am fi finding the input bar twice. So let me put it in a variable. After pressing enter, now we are in the docs page. Let's verify the header to confirm it. And then we'll write browser in to end the test. Now let's run both of our tests. As we learned earlier, we run our tests using npx nightwatch test. Has a, our tests are passed. Today you learned how to test the web for the most common use cases using these three important techniques finding, interacting and asserting. We also learned how to wait for elements, how to simulate pressing of special keys, how to get attributes and values of elements, how to check things strictly or loosely. During this process we also learned how to use Nightwatch APIs that helps us write tests easier. In our next video we will learn some advanced techniques in web testing such as test hooks using async await, multi-tab interactions, iframe, copy-paste, 
executing client js verifying geolocation and more thanks for watching happy testing and i'll see you in the next video don't forget to like our video and if you want to learn more about testing subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to stay updated